Hello, everybody. Welcome to week two of the 40th Gershman Philadelphia Jewish Film Festival. We hope you guys have been enjoying all of our amazing films so far. Uh, so yes, obviously, um, yesterday we did try to have an interview with the director of In Your Eyes, I See My Country, Kamal Hakkar. If you watched it, obviously, the, <laughs> the Q&A, obviously, there were a little bit of de technical difficulties, but we're back. And we're joined here. Uh, Kamal is here. Bienvenue. Come on. And Thank also we have yeah. um, moderating this discussion, Omar Boom. He is a sociocultural anthropologist <laughs> and he his academic experience uh, is mainly like at the intersections of Middle Eastern and North African studies. And he's written on many different topics, the history of Jewish Muslim relations from the 19th century yeah. to the present, the Holocaust, education, music, youth, I'm sorry, Islamic education and youth, migration, everything, you name it. So the way this works is we had, I personally reached out to every anybody who had seen the film. It's currently streaming right now on our digital platform and they submitted some questions. So while the two of you guys are talking, uh, some at some point you guys can, you know, go look at some of the questions that uh, the people have for either of you. And um, yeah, pretty simple. So I'm going to hide myself and mute myself and then you guys can begin. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Matt, for the introduction. Uh, Kamal, it's a great Kamal. pleasure to share this uh, uh, virtual stage with you. Uh, you congratulations on your new documentary. I think it's... Uh, it's, uh, I really enjoyed watching it and I think it raises a lot of interesting and relevant uh, questions. So as, a, as an anthropologist, as well as an educator of Moroccan and North African Judaism, I can tell you that your work uh, uh, has played a central role in many uh, Middle Eastern and North African debates, uh, I'm sure in Morocco and in Europe, but also in the United States not only about uh, Jewish history, about uh, Israel-Palestine issues, but also about Moroccan Jews globally. So, uh, and for us as educators in American universities and institutions, we really appreciate how your work facilitates a lot of difficult discussions in our classrooms. So it's a, I, I can tell you that your first the first documentary on the Tin Hira Jerusalem and this new documentary, In Your Eyes I See My Country, has really, uh, really, it really not only broadened what kind of work we use in the classroom, but it allowed for a serious conversation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I will try to use some of the questions I have and then uh, include the questions that were sent to us by some of the uh, listeners and the, some of the viewers who watched your documentary and then try to have a, a conversation about the themes and also and where you had where you're heading from here as far as conversations about Moroccan Judaism and Moroccan Jewish history in general. So let me begin with a personal and a biographical question. <coughs> before I get to the, to the documentary. Your personal story as a son of an immigrant, and you're an immigrant yourself, and your films are stories of migration and return. <clears throat> what does migration mean to you and the characters of your documentaries? Thank you, Omar, for your question. First of all, I, want, I would love to thank uh, the Jewish Philadelphia Film Festival uh, to give me this opportunity to share my work, my last movie with the audience there. And I am very glad also, and uh, it's a great honor to share uh, with you because uh, uh, we met, uh, you remember perhaps the first time in Boston with my friend Anne-Marie Codure and you, you gave me your book, Memory of Absence. It's also about uh, this exile of uh, Jewish uh, Jewish family, you know, and um, and you know also I was um, I was a teacher during many years 
teachers of uh, history. I learned history in Sorbonne. And uh, you, I, I don't have a words to, to express how I am very moved when um, some um, specialists like you, socio-anthropologist and uh, uh, historian and uh, ethnologist also, um, works about my work because uh, I was also a teacher, uh, a little bit of researcher uh, at a moment donné in my life. And uh, wow, it's a, for me to say it's, it's a very, it's a great honor, it's a great honor for me. And the pleasure, um, the, pleasure, to... the pleasure is mine too. The pleasure is mine too. <laughs> Merci. And of course, uh, you saw Tinorir Jerusalem. The Tinorir Jerusalem, my first movie, it, uh, it was about the past, you know. I wanted to know how, uh, how and why Jews left Morocco and specifically my hometown, you know. Um, I, I will give you some, uh, some points about my biography. Uh, it's very important. I was born in Tinrir, uh, in, big, in the big Kasbah, uh, very old uh, Kasbah, old house, uh, Amazir house, you know, and for me it's uh, just incredible. And um, my father has immigrated to France in 68. I was born in 77 and uh, I was a little bit sick and my father decided to uh, to nous prendre to to with my mother to France. I have I have six months in this moment, you know. Look, I was very very young, of course, but I grew up in France. My father he, he was he, he was a worker uh, in the central nuclear central. Uh, my mother has never been to school, you know. It's very important to to see also. D'où je parle? Je sais pas comment on dit. How do you say? Uh, what I what I talk about or what? Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, I'm came from the popular family, from the periphery, from uh, from Tinrir. You know, it's like your hometown also. Tata, yeah. we are not in the capital, Rabat, Kaza, etc., etc. So uh, my father has never cut with Morocco. Every summer we were we went to Morocco to visit. Uh, my family and uh, because I have also a house there and my cousin, my aunts and uh, everybody. And I grew up with this between, you know, between to be in France and to be in Morocco. And I remember when I was child um, for the French people, uh, I was Moroccan, you know, and for the Moroccan, uh, I was French, Nsrani, you know. Mm -hmm. And this trouble, this little bit trouble and the uh, I love that also, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to feel in between. And as when I was very young, I feel immediately because I grew up in the modern city uh, in France. It was not in the ghetto, you know, and uh, uh, dans les in the banlieue, for example. But uh, I, I lived like French people, you know, and we were the only family, perhaps sometimes two family uh, from the uh, immigrants family. Uh, in dans les petits, the very little village, and uh, and in Tinrir, I grew up. Of, uh, every summer we were in this big house, this house of uh, it, it, it was a casbah, les maisons pisées. And when I, for, I I think all my inspiration came from this uh, from this city, you know, from this origin of the city. And when I was young, I feel always. Um, uh, you know, if if one day I, I would love to write a book about this experience, uh, I think the title it will be my my strange strangeness. You know, and I always feel uh, something uh, about me very strangeness uh, in my background. You know, because I came from the very pop. I, I am the first uh, in my family to have a baccalaureate to go to the university. And uh, I told you, my mother had never been to 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 school. school. Yeah. And for me, all my fight in uh, in my life, and you can see it also uh, yeah. in my movie uh, in Tinrir Jerusalem, and also in this movie, is how uh, we can manage uh, this this deep identity. Okay, I am Moroccan. Uh, Berber Moroccan, you know, 
and to be loyal in the loyalty and in the same time to be emancipated also from my community, from my tribu, you know, and to think uh, without borders, you know. And I saw in Neta and Amit a, mir a mirror also with this, uh, because Neta and Amit was born in, uh, in uh, Netivot, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it is a periphery, it's like Tinri, periphery. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's actually, it's no, great that sorry. you, it's great that you made the link to, to uh, Neta and, uh, and Amit, because they are, they are the main characters of, of your new documentary, In Your Eyes, I See My Country. And before I ask you the next question, which I think I'm going to uh, pull out from the list of questions that were sent to us by the audience, I want to I wanna really, I, I agree with you. I, I, the, the reason why I started my, this conversation uh, by asking you about migration, because I feel that the, the, the intensity, that emotional intensity about being there and not there. So, so I, and I think it's really something that, that really involves in uh, a lot of your, uh, your work, both, your, both of your documentaries. So one of the, one of the, one of the uh, member of the audience is asking you, how do you get the idea of doing this, this documentary? I think you started talking about it. Did you know the couple and knew that they were going to take this trip to Morocco? Or at what point did you get involved with this story? So, so, uh, so uh, let, me, let me add something to this question, which I think they, they connect. Why, you, why do you focus on biography and the biography, not only of your family in the first documentary, but later on, even in the second documentary, and the Jewish as well as Muslim families of Tinri? Just as a, but that's, that's the, that's the second question. It's a good question because I think, my, you know, first I, I want to, to tell, to say, my first connection with the Jewish culture, it was with the, show, with the when I learned about Shoah, when I read about uh, Primo Levi and this experience of, uh, of uh, Jewish from uh, Europe, you know, and this destruction. And when, the first time when I heard about Jews from Morocco, because for me, in my mind, I always believed uh, to be a Moroccan, it's, uh, it was only to be Muslim, you know? And when I, I discovered uh, from my grandfather for the first time, I was a teenager, he told me about Moshe and David, and I was very surprised because for me, uh, the Moroccan name, it's uh, only Mustafa, Muhammad, Kamal, Omar, for example. And wow, I discovered something incredible. Wow, uh, Yave, there is like another possibility to be a Moroccan, you know? And um, I think through this Jewish absence, I, I found also uh, myself as a Moroccan uh, Berber Muslim, when I, I was in front of my grandfather, my grandmother, I realized uh, what, what was my culture, you know, what was this incredible uh, Amazigh civilization, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, uh, when I was a child, I always saw uh, when it was the end of the holiday uh, to see your mother to cry with my uh, Tu vois, j'ai la chair de poule, rien que d'en parler. With my grandmother, it was the end of the holiday, you know, it was the separation during one, for one year, only one year, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because we lived in, uh, in France. Wow, I was this, uh, they, were, they were very sad and uh, moi, je, I, I'm starting to, to cry also when I, cause when I see someone to cry, I, I, cannot, to, <laughs> I cannot to see them and uh, it's okay, you know. And uh, my grandmother and to, pro to protect her with the, uh, Jalabiya, you know, uh, etc., etc. And I, je, why, why I, pourquoi je dis, why I did, uh, pourquoi je dis ça? It's because I think this, uh, this uh, exile, because also me, I left Morocco, I have six months, okay? Okay, I don't remember when I, when I leave Morocco, but, uh, but uh, dans le discours, in the discourse of my parents, of my father also, uh, my, I remember one day my father, he told me, 
one day we will return to my to to live in Morocco. For me, it was wow. But I, I, je voulais, I don't want, you know, to because I was very good. I feel very good in France when I was child and uh, etc. I didn't want to live in Morocco, and uh, it's incredible now. I decided to move to live here after to 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 do uh, this movie Chinerir Jerusalem about this separation, about this exile, and I just uh, I realized my fantasm to come back to live in Morocco. But the difference with the, it's why, because it's why I have this empathy with this community. Mm -hmm. This difference uh, that it's me until now, I have a house, I have a family uh, in Tinrir. And Neta and Amit, they don't have nothing, you know, only the memories, only les chansons, the songs, you know, yeah. and only this possibility to, to reconnect, you know, with uh, with Morocco, and uh, yeah, and I during many years, uh, I I remember I I I did a, a dream about it, and uh, I remember I was with my grandmother and my grandfather, and they told me, uh, yeah, you have to leave Morocco, and uh, it's a, you cannot to come back in your land, you know. And for me, it's impossible. I'm not nationalist. You know, my love about the the my, my love about Morocco and French. It's in, it it is in the way of a very poetic way and politic way also. It's not something uh, uh, nationalist and uh, chauvin. <laughs> yeah. So 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 tell us a little bit about why Neta and why Amit. What's special about them? How did you? Because I can tell from the when you watch the documentary, you see this really, th these are part of your family. These are, fr there is, the relationship is very strong. It's, you can feel it there. Yeah. When, just when, uh, when Neta goes to um, uh, Tinrir, the way she uh, holds the hand of the old man, and there, there is a lot of, uh, and the way when, when Amit sits outside of the, uh, looking at the cemetery and trying to, with a wall around the cemetery, uh, exactly. a lot of emotions. So it, it, there is a lot of emotion there. So tell us a little bit about why, what makes this couple so important yeah. to this movie, to this documentary? Yeah, of course. You know, when I finished in Jerusalem, it was in 2012. And uh, I met Net, uh, I know when I finished in Jerusalem, I didn't finish to explore uh, this topic about uh, Jewish memory, and uh, in this time, I wanted to to make a sequel with this with this my characters of my first movie to to go with them to Morocco, you know, and Hanini uh, Shmuyal, Aisha Al Kobi, etc., etc. And suddenly, I uh, I have I went to Israel in this moment in June twenty yeah two thousand twelve because I have a screening with Tinerir Jerusalem, and I discovered, uh, I discovered Neta and Amit, you know. I saw them uh, for the first time on Facebook about uh, the song, they, they, they did a clip uh, about uh, the song of uh, Ya, ya Umi yeah. of, uh, of Lin Monti. Yeah. When I saw that, I was in shock, you know, because I saw the flag of Morocco, uh, the clip was sh shoot in the, in the house of Neta and Amit, and immediately I put a comment, you know, ah, I want, I want to, to meet this uh, beautiful woman, this incredible artist, and when this friend, Natalia Ziza, wrote after my comments, you know, her father was born in Tinrir. I was totally in shock, you know, because for me, uh, I, I think it's too because uh, you know this movie in your eyes. I see country. Meant to be. Destiny, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, destiny. Sorry, it's also to say there is not fatality in the big story. Okay, the big story, they separated our parents, our grandparents, but us, this uh, now our new generation, Jews and Muslim, uh, we can rebuild something new between us through art, through cinema, 
and specifically through the music, you know, because we Wait. share yeah. this music. That's a great, I'm going to get to the back. Sorry to interrupt you, but, but it's good that you, you mentioned music. I, I think, uh, I th for me, uh, uh, watching your, in your eyes, I see my country, what the most powerful part, or at least um, thing in the movie is the music. I think it really, uh, I, I, I think the, in terms, as, an, as, an, as a work of art, I think you, did an amazing job by putting together the story and the plot through the music. So my question is, music is the late motive yeah. that you see throughout the movie. It's, and, and I love that it's not only music, but the sound of languages. When you see Hebrew, you listen to Hebrew sound, the Moroccan Arabic, the, the Moroccan Darija, French and uh, uh, Tamazight, all of these languages. Why did you choose musical sounds instead of the voices of memory as you did in your first movie, Tinghir Juli Yeah. You know, the music is the main character of this movie, is the trade of this movie. Uh, it's not an, uh, I didn't use uh, this music as an illustration about something, you know. It's a really main character because, uh, you know, uh, the characters of Netan and Amit. Uh, so they, they are a political, uh, political body, you know, in the sense they can change the mentalities. And, you know, I didn't choose also the music, uh, n'importe quelle music. And if you, uh, if you read the translation about this music, it's always about love, about separation. You know, all the music, uh, talking about love, uh, specifically the Shab in Shabi music, etc., etc. But it's also the metaphor uh, about love between these two communities. Uh, it's, a, it's a metaphor about this, the separation uh, between these two communities, you know. And Amit and Neta, they are not nationalists too. Uh, they created through this music an intimate space Perhaps they cannot to come back to live in Morocco. They can have this experience, you know, but my movie is not about nostalgia or something like my first movie. Yeah. It's uh, they want to build something in the present, in the for the future also. It's a very politic, you know. You know why why I did why why I say uh, we can change mentalities uh, through uh, this music through these characters. You know, if Neta, I, th I, je pense, I think, you know, if Neta uh, choose uh, this job to sing in uh, Moroccan Darija, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way to, because she wants to repair something about this exile, you know, and through the voice, la voix, it's mm -hmm. also to tell. Where is my place in this world, you know? And me too, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a mirror about also my question, you know? And uh, what, what is my place uh, in France, in Morocco, in, uh, in New York? I don't know, you know? And, yeah. um, and I think the music, it's our common territory uh, for us. And it's something very intimate, very poetic and very, and very politic also. I, and, I, uh, also I, I think I think I, I think you're you're saying a lot of really important points here, and, and I, I see why why you work why Essaouira, for instance, was a stop in your in your in the documentary because of the power of the festival, uh, the Andalusian music festival, the power of the Gnawam uh, festival that uh, uh, Andrea Azoula has been working on for the last, and, and the other members of the Moroccan Muslim and Jewish community have been working on. So music is a, is a as you, and you rightly so, is, is a way to learn, it's a teaching, it's a teaching moment. So that leads me to, because you talked about that Nita and Amit are not nativist. You said, you said nationalist, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you mean nativist in, in the sense that uh, this nationalism, chauvinism, uh, chauvinistic types of nationalism. 
Yeah, there are so, nuts, you know. Yeah, so so you said that. So I want to, and then I, I love how you say that music is a character in the story. And I, I love that. I, I really, I, I love that the way you framed it. So Neta and Amit represent a generation of Israelis of Moroccan descent, vocal about their attachment to their Moroccan heritage. But they're also, as you said, they're politically conscious about a future of possibilities of Jewish Muslim relations. So especially in, the, in this context of Arab Israeli co uh, conflict, uh, so can you, can you say um, how, um, how does their work, the music as, as this documentary uh, are part of this conversation now and, and, and what, what, what they add to this conversation and how we learn more about other possibilities about how to change the world and uh, work more for a better, for a better peace project. Yes. You know, for Neta, just to sing in Arabic, in Moroccan Arabic in Israel, it's a political act, you know, political act, because, you know, the Arabic is a language of the enemy, of course, uh, there. And Neta and Amit, uh, they learned, uh, they learned uh, Moroccan Darija, but they learned also Palestinian, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they collaborate also with the some Palestinian artists there. And I remember you talked about this incredible festival, uh, mm -hmm. Le Festival des Andalusie Atlantique, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Friend, Andrea Azoulay. And uh, when, I was the, when I was the first time there, wow, I saw something uh, in opposite with this bad world in this context, you know? with the nationalist one, you saw it with Trump in America, with Marine Le Pen in France, with Bibi Netanyahu in Israel, with the Islamist party in a Mediterranean country, you know? And um, the, this politician, they want to, to tell us, we cannot to be multiple, you know? You, we cannot to be hybrid. We cannot to, to, be, uh, to be plural. And my work on the work of Neta and Amit, uh, you, my movie also, uh, In Your Eyes I See My Country, it's like a reflection about how it is to be in between, you know? Uh, I don't want to choose uh, between uh, my French and Moroccan identity. Uh, it's my both identity, you know? And, uh, I, and I, have, I have another level because I am Amazir also. Uh, my parents are Muslim, but I am secular, and I live with that, you know. And uh, and for me, it's not a problem, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, and the context now with the communitarism, with the racism, with the anti-Semitism, uh, our work it's very political. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe through the music, through the meeting between people, and through uh, through the the, the, through the, the cinema, specifically for me. You know, at the beginning, uh, uh, avant, uh, before to, 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 to make the, my first documentary, I wanted to make a PhD, you know, because I am also a little bit an intellectual and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But after, you know, je réfléchi, I thought, and uh, I wanted to, 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 to touch uh, my people also to touch my mother. She had never been to, to school. I wanted to touch my, my grandmother in Masba. She don't know to, to, to speak, uh, for example, in Darija. And I think, I believe uh, through the cinema, the power of the cinema, uh, and specifically with the documentary, we can, we can change. We can, um, we can change little bit the mentalities about other. Other because I, all I, my work is about uh, other. Yeah. No, I I think I think you're I think you're uh, right. I think you you've already. Uh, this is one of the questions I had, but you already touched upon it. I I I do believe that your work um, doesn't matter how people think about it, whether they like it or they don't like it. It really drove a really important conversation in Morocco, and um, uh, which is a public conversation. And and I think. The, um, the, the, the idea that the film and the documentary and the movie 
is an important part of this conversation uh, in addition to the book and the textbook. So that's why I think your work really brings together all these, these issues. So I, I uh, the other question I have is, is about education. And before, we, before, I, before I ask you my last question, so I have two more questions left. So um, yeah. I know you are a student of history. I know I've read, uh, uh, I learned a lot from other interviews that you gave and also the work you did on um, early Moroccan history. So you are not only a public figure that trying to change certain things through the medium of cinema and movie, but also you are interested in raising and enlightening and educating a new generation of kids. And as part of this, your mission, which is your objective is to create a Maroc pluriel, as you say. So how do you think, what do you think about, what is your view about the state of education, Jewish education in Morocco today? And what do your documentaries add to as far as this objective? Yeah. A good question and you i know, say the whole uh, morocco but also i would say the arab world and the middle east because um, i think yeah, they're, they're also in israel you know yeah. because uh, it's a very good question because you know in morocco we didn't learn about jewish story uh, it's just recently you know and with the last constitution they recognized for the first time in 2011 the amazigh culture the jewish culture in the constitution is very important you know very, very important. But if we want to, to, to share, to touch uh, popular people, uh, people uh, living in, the, in the, real, the real Morocco, you know, and we have to learn uh, the Amazigh culture, the Jewish culture, and, uh, and uh, you know, the Pan-Arabist and the Islamization, uh, it's a big pity for us, you know, and uh, we, we, we lost a lot of things with this uh, learning about plurality, because if you learn about plurality, you cannot to be racist, you cannot to be anti-Semite, you know? And the story of Morocco, uh, they, come, they don't begin, began, they don't begin with the Idrisid, uh, the founder of the dynasty of Morocco, you know, Fez, you know? Uh, we, we were polities before Islam, uh, before the Arab came to Morocco, you know? And we have to learn that, you know, and uh, to put uh, this Jewish story on the, the Moroccan, the, because it, this is the Moroccan history and also the Amazigh history, uh, you know, because when I was, for example, one day I was in Enle, uh, it was about a festival about music, Ahidus, you know, it's very poetic, it's about love between man and woman, and we know. Uh, Morocco is very traditional, is very conservative in the same time. But if we uh, learn the song of Haddawaki, the book of Edmo Amran al Maleh, the, I don't know, uh, all this uh, Shabi and the uh, Laita and the old Lignawa music, we, we have to learn uh, the complexity and the richness of the Mar Morocco identity, you know. Uh, we are not not only Arab and Muslim, and uh, and also in the Arab you you have a lot uh, very different level, uh, Andalus and uh, etc etc. And uh, it, I think it's uh, cela shows it's the most thing important to do now if we want to transmit and to preserve uh, our memory and the, our history. It's very important. That's great. So so my my other question relates to an important. Uh, part of the documentary, uh, which has to do with the passport and, uh, yeah. and Neta trying to get it. And, 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 and I can say that because I have a lot of friends, uh, Moroccan Jewish friends who have gone through that process or they're going through the process of getting the identity card uh, and, because, and their, the passport because the Moroccan law allows for Moroccan Jews, wherever they are in the world, to, yeah. uh, if they choose to, they, to get their passport. So tell us, tell us about what it means to you as, an, as a director of this doc documentary and as also as an artist, what is this text, subtext in the, in the documentary? What it means, the, the passport, why it's there? I think it's as important for me, it's as important as the music. So I, but I just wanna hear 
more about how do you choose to include it there and what it means to Neta. Is it, is it, is it another level of this uh, so-called Moroccan exceptionality or the symbol of hope for a Jewish Muslim relations to get the passport because it's also a part of inclusion. I think it's uh, for me. It's uh, the way I read it as a as as a, as, a, as, a, as a viewer. I see it as a one one more step towards yeah, inclusion. Of course. Okay. Of course. Yeah, yeah, and I think for the Moroccan uh, uh, Jewish living in Israel for this young generation generation it's very super subversive you know yeah. to to have a moroccan passport uh, the moroccan passport it's uh, uh, in the uh, you you need uh, a lot of visa if you want to travel and uh, you cannot to have an advantage with the moroccan passport it's very very symbolic and also me when i decided to come back to morocco i did i, I decided to make my moroccan passport i never used uh, that, but uh, then that, uh, yeah, je jamais utilisé. But oui. it's, uh, I think it's, uh, c'est une manière, it's a way to tell, uh, I want to be recognized by, by Moroccans, je pense, you know. It's a way for Neta, I think, also to repair this uh, brisure, uh, this separation, this exile, and uh, it's, yeah, okay. I am. I was born in Israel, but I, 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 je peux, I can be also Moroccan, you know. And you know, it's very important because in Israel, a lot of the young generation from the Ashkenaz side, they did all German passport, yeah. uh, sometimes Polish passport, you know. It's very rare for the young generation from the this part of the world, you know, Moroccan, Algerian, to have. Uh, to, to want to, 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 to want to have uh, this Moroccan passport. It's very, very symbolic and it's, um, it's a way to say, yeah, okay, I am part of this society also. Okay. And uh, it's a way to say, okay, you separated uh, our parents, but me, I can reconnect with my roots, uh, with this very important paper to be recognized by the state of Morocco, the kingdom, the kingdom of Morocco. And, the, and I, I know other people, the young generation, they did it, you know, and now they are very proud with this Moroccan passport. It's not, too, it's not something nationalist, you know, and uh, chauvinistic and uh, it's, it's more about love of uh, the country, about love of the, the culture. And, uh, and yeah, it was the dream of, uh, of this character. Okay, my, my, before I ask my last question, I want to say something that actually um, uh, used as, a, uh, as an introduction to the last question. And I, 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 have, to, I have to say that um, Kamal, as I, say, I said this in the introduction, I, I really appreciate the, your take on the debates that's going on right now about minorities, because I think, I think as Moroccans and I, as a Moroccan, who works in the US and uh, as a Moroccan also, Moroccan American, uh, I'm, all, I'm, very, I'm very sensitive to the way we talk about cultural issues and also especially talk about an issue like minority. I think it's, it's an important, uh, I think it's an important conversation. I think it's important to have the conversation, but also have it within the context and with respect to the cultural specificities of the countries. And I really, I appreciate the work you're doing in on your as far, in on your part to talk about these issues and also the work you're doing also as far as the Amazigh culture too the the short documentaries that you're working on Amazigh culture I think they really um, they they are um, um, at some point I think I hope in the future you will expand on that on different part of the Amazigh culture throughout Morocco so. So, so we need we need a new perspective, and and you are part of this conversation. So I really appreciate that, and I commend you on that on that work. So with that, I want to know what is Kamal doing right now, and what is he preparing for us? You don't have to say it; you can just say, "I it's it's a it's a great pleasure to have this conversation with you," and that's it. But we want to know because give us a teaser here, if you if you if you if you if you wish. 
Yeah, of course. It, uh, uh, now I'm writing a new project. It's a short future movie about God of Rain in Amazigh culture. Wow. You know, the Berber uh, were polytheist and they believed in the God of Rain and the, there is a very incredible tradition about that until now. Yeah. Uh, instead, because uh, it's more complicated now with the Islamization of the, the society. And uh, I discovered a lot of songs and I want to, to make an opera, you know, opera, yes, an yes. opera Amazir with this, all this language from a reef, from my place, from your place, you know, to mix that. And uh, it, will be, it's, it will be a story about love, of course, you know, because you know, uh, during this tradition, uh, une femme, one woman, uh, mm -hmm. devait, je sais pas comment on le dit en, en anglais, in English, uh, on offrait en offrande au dieu de la pluie une femme du village. You know, yeah. it's a ritual. It's a it's a ritual gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, et cette femme, this woman, devait se baigner nu dans la rivière. You know, and uh, and et c'est aussi uh, it's a metaphor yeah. about. Uh, it's a metaphor of the, also this woman needs to be uh, needs to swim uh, naked in in the in the in the river. Wow. Yeah. And I want just to why I want to to make you know I je, I thought about. Uh, uh, all this afternoon, uh, I wrote. Uh, I wrote about my intention. You know, it's encore something about my strangeness, the strangeness of this country. Also, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also to say to, to the way to say. Uh, you, you have to remember uh, qui on a été before. Uh, how we were, how we were, and what we were in the past. Yeah, yeah past, because yeah. even American people, Save knew we were polities. Perhaps we can be more open-minded uh, today in this society, uh, because you know we saw with the extremists and etc. Uh, etc. Et we we are less open-minded about a lot of things, you know. And often, you know, I remember I, I gave an interview for the Jeune Afrique uh, when I did this movie, uh, documentary movie about love in Morocco. I worked about this poetess, Maririda Nait Atik. Marida, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, she was an alphabet and uh, uh, she was it's totally- It's a beautiful work, it's a beautiful work. It's a, it's yeah. a beautiful work. And uh, it was Tassanu Tairinu. Yeah. And I, I, I say in this interview, the Islamist and conservative movement, uh, they accused us, the, I am prog uh, comment on dit, uh, the progressist, progressist, yeah? Progressive, progressist. I am from the small, you know, no, la gauche, comment on dit la gauche? The, the, the left, yeah. The left. The left, uh, you know, it's, it's, my, it's, my, uh, it's my utopia, you know? And they accused us always, ah, you want to, to, to live like in, uh, in France and to the, 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 the Western uh, model in Morocco, you know? No. Uh, if I, if I, when I read a lot of book about the organization of the, the Confederation of Eight Attar, for example, mm. they were very secularist, you know? They always separate religion and politics, you know? And, uh, I want just to, to tell to the Moroccan audience, you don't have to forget about our past, you know, and about, and I remember also during another party in, in Tinrir, you know, about this uh, tradition, the whole tradition with this music, you know, we were in trance, the women dancing with the, with the, um, with the hair, you know, like that. And for me, it's just incredible and to, to yeah, to to show uh, something else they don't see it in the media in Morocco in Channel Media for example in uh, in in the street also and um, all my in inspiration came from my culture you know je prends pas I don't take something from outside and to 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 on on, 
on that note, thank you so much, Kamal. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure uh, basically watching your, your work and reading about uh, your work. I know that uh, there's so many that, that I, I can tell you that your work has been uh, an inspiration for a lot of scholars, anthropologists, historians, and uh, literary scholars who have been not only showing your work in classrooms, I can tell you in the US, but also in Europe, but also writing about it and engaging with it. And I think you did engage, you're not only engaging with the public, but also engaging with the community of scholars. So we appreciate uh, what you've done and uh, what you will do. And I'm really excited about your future project. So with that, uh, thank you. And I hope to, you, I, we will definitely have another conversation soon. And thanks, Matt. Thank, thank you, Matt guys. Merci, merci to the door. Merci. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Salama, Omar. Merci beaucoup. Salama. Salama. Bye.